Good morning. In the matter of Athens Clark County Board of Elections and Registration, uh, this is case number 202-005. We call the meeting in order. My name is Ryan Jarvey. I'm the general counsel of the Secretary of State's office. Myself and Charlie McGowan with the AG's office will be presenting this case. I just wanted to make a short introduction uh, before we, we call witnesses just to try to help you give you guys, one of the witnesses is to try to help give you guys a sense of, of what's going on. I don't envision um, examining that myself, but letting, 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 letting them speak to you. Um, I think one thing to talk about before you get to the witnesses is a quick overview of Georgia law and state election board rules and regulations. OCGA 21200 says the equipment used for casting and counting votes in county, state, and federal elections shall be the same in each county in this state. That's the crux of Georgia's unified voting system. The same statute, the next paragraph, says once such equipment is certified by the Secretary of State as safe and practicable for use, all elections shall be conducted with the use of scanning ballots marked by electronic ballot markers. The Dominion system currently being used in 158 Georgia counties was first certified by Secretary of State on August 9, 2019, and was recertified on February 19th. Uh, to do some software uploads. State Election Board Rule 183-12-1 says, beginning with the 2020 presidential preference primary, all federal, state, and county elections, voting in the polls, including both election day and advance voting, shall be conducted via ballots marked by electronic ballot markers. SCB Rule 1-14-.02 has the same requirement to use electronic ballot markers for advanced voting. That same uh, rule, 183-1-12-01, also requires counties to have a sufficient amount of emergency uh, paper backup ballots in the sense that something does not, does not, does not happen. Uh, the way it's supposed to. So you know, there's a backup plan built into both the law and state election board rules. However, that backup plan doesn't swallow the fact that Georgia has a unified voting system, and the state statute and state election board rule clearly state, here's what it has, here's the equipment that we're going to use. And I'm, I know there was a big argument in the General Assembly about should we go camera for ballots, should we go ballot warming devices, there's an argument before that in the safe commission, it's the same thing. There have arguments in court about that. So there are people who are very passionate about using camera paper ballots. Um, but that's not the way that the Georgia General Assembly and then correspondingly this board has, has enacted Georgia law. So just to give a little background, um, on March 3rd, the Athens Clark County Board, board voted three to two to, to immediately stop using the ballot marking devices. Um, they found it impractical to use ballot marking devices in a way that protects ballot secrecy while allowing sufficient monitoring of the equipment. Um, one legal point I want to make before I wrap it up. Uh, the Georgia Supreme Court has held in a fact pattern not, not too dissimilar from this case. Uh, where a local government um, was interpreting a statute about uh, what is to the greatest extent practicable mean. The Supreme Court said, practicable is a word susceptible of a limited range of meanings. And to say that one must comply with the requirement to the greatest extent practicable is not to say that he must comply with it only if he feels like complying or he thinks it's a good idea. The statute leaves some flexibility to authorities in cases in which strict compliance would be impractical, but that does not indicate that the provisions of the statute are not mandatory. 
And I think that's what we have here. We have a statute that's mandatory, and it allows for emergency provisions, um, but it doesn't allow for basically ignoring, ignoring the statute. Uh, if the statute were entirely optional, the Supreme Court goes on to say, there would be no need for a provision affording such flexibility. Uh, more importantly, quoting the say, this is City of Marietta, the summer hour, uh, Supreme Court's case from 2017. More, more important, practicable does not mean convenient. Um, in modern uses, practicable is commonly understood to mean capable of being accomplished or feasible in a particular situation. To say something is impracticable is to say that it reasonably cannot be done. It does not mean merely that it's convenient. <coughs> Again, members of the board, I'll talk about the law in just a moment, but um, we have a slightly different view of the facts here. We, we have a board of elections administration caught between a rock and a hard place with the multiple requirements and, and many senses conflicting requirements of the new Georgia voting statutes. Uh, foremost among them is the uh, the 250 rule, one voting booth for every 250 voters. And uh, another set of obligations is the prohibition on changing polling places within 60 days of uh, a primary or general election. And even if you have your 60 days, you have uh, notice requirements before those 60 days. Uh, and so it really extends that time out to about 75 or 80 days. And in this case, what uh, the facts will show is that the deficiencies in the athens Clark County polling places, uh, specifically about six that are very small, um, did not become apparent until after uh, the Secretary of State's office did an, an inspection of those polling places. And at that point, it was too late to change them. And in fact, there was a threat to sue the Athens Clark County Board of Elections and Registration if it did change the public places. And so the, the, the board faced uh, one hand uh, tied behind their back on not being able to change polling places uh, and having to, to uh, comply with this uh, rule regarding the uh, number of uh, voting booths per uh, voter. And uh, as early voting started, and you will hear, uh, the uh, number of ballot marking devices in the one early voting place was too many to uh, satisfy the U board's other obligation and constitutional obligation to protect the right to a secret ballot. Uh, in Georgia. That is a right that appears not only in the Constitution, but in about 20 places in the election code. So faced with, with those uh, set of circumstances, uh, this board uh, decided to use the mechanism that is available under Georgia law um, when uh, the use of voting machines is not practicable, uh, handmarked paper ballots may be used in their stead. And uh, Mr. Germany talked about the uniform system, and indeed, Georgia does have this new uniform system, but the uniform system uh, contains a, a, an out clause, and that is in section two of 21-2-300. Uh, it says, unless otherwise authorized by law. So you must use these ballot marking devices unless otherwise authorized by law. And the law upon which the board uh, relied was 21-2-334, which provides the relevant part that if for any other reason at any primary or election, the use of voting machines wholly or in part is not practicable, the superintendent may arrange to have the voting for such candidates or offices or for such questions conducted by paper ballots. So what does practicable mean? Well, we rely on this very simple case that 
Mr. Germany relied on, City of Marietta versus Summer Rower. That's 302 uh, Georgia 645, a Georgia Supreme Court case from 2017. Now, practical does not mean that the use of voting machines is simply optional. That is not our position. Or that the obligation to use voting machines can be overcome simply by disagreeing with them. That is not our position. Practical does not mean convenient, as Mr. Germany said. But to say that something is not practicable is to say that it is not feasible in a particular situation or reasonably cannot be done. That's a paraphrase from the summer hour opinion. So who gets to decide what is practicable and what is not practicable? Within limits, the athens Park County Board of Education, uh, Board of Elections and Registration gets to make that call. Uh, that's why the Sumter County case came out the way that it did, because the, the judge in that case found, uh, and, and when I say the Sumter County case, and I know you're familiar with the case challenging the use of ballot marking devices in Sumter County. Um, the judge in that case found that the Sumter County Board of Elections and Registration had some degree of discretion to determine whether it was practicable or not. And the plaintiffs in that case, the petitioners, had not established that, uh, the, uh, that the right was so clear as to eliminate that discretion. And we think that standard applies here. So under the law, it is up to the Board of Education, of Elections and Registration to select and equip polling places and to ensure the secrecy of the ballot. And we believe consequently that the legal standard for this state election board is, uh, has to be that you must find that no reasonable board faced with the circumstances that this board faced could find that the use of voting machines under the circumstances was not practicable. We think it's a very high standard. And if you do not apply that high standard, if you apply your own view of that, then judges in the courts of the state should be able to apply that view. And I dare say that there will be more lawsuits like the one in Sumter County. Uh, and judges in those cases will not be able to defer to the discretion of boards of elections. So uh, we think that is the law. And the facts, as, as I have outlined them, and as we will present them over the next few hours, will uh, support the board of elections decision in this case, given the facts that they were presented as of last Tuesday.
Now, as Mr. Kelly explained, we started the day off today. Impossible or impracticable does not mean inconvenient. It doesn't mean when it's the preferred policy choice of a county board. The Georgia Supreme Court has defined, now we all know what impossible means, but the Georgia Supreme Court has defined the term impracticable as it's used in the statute, and they have said, to say that something is impractical is to say that it reasonably cannot be done. It does not mean merely that it is inconvenient. Now, so here we certainly don't dis dispute that this is a, a difficult decision before the board, that they were weighing competing interests, between privacy, and how to set up their locations and accommodate the number of voting booths that they had to um, provide by law. But here, it's pretty clear from the chairman's testimony that the board didn't really even consider whether privacy was achievable. It seemed to be a foregone conclusion when they, vote, when they went to vote. Um, the staff worked hard, as we saw, to come up with a privacy plan. They had sketches made. The board didn't wait to review those for each polling location. They instead went forward with a hasty vote. Um, this vote was also against the advice of the county attorney. At the meeting, since the audio was in the admitted to the record, we will hear the them talk about um, this the situation and, and how the same situation happened down in Sumter County and the very argument that, that voter privacy issues mandated that counties switch to, to handmark paper ballots, that had already been rejected by the judge down in Sumter County. Um, I was present at that hearing in Sumter County. What it was was an emergency hearing on a writ of mandamus where um, a voting rights organization had sued the, the county board trying to force them to use handmark paper ballots based on privacy concerns. The Superior Court judge rejected that emergency motion and denied it. Um, and, and what the judge found there was not that the board had discretion to make that decision. What the judge found was that there wasn't evidence that um, it was impossible or impractical to achieve voter privacy. And many of the same um, exhibits and evidence were presented at that hearing as was today, where the judge was persuaded that options that were provided by the Secretary of State's office to achieve privacy were, could be employed by that particular board. It, it's also important to note that uh, in addition to being able to achieve voter privacy with the BMD touch screens by using screens or, or curtains, um, any voter that has a concern about the privacy of their ballot and prefers to vote on paper can do so under Georgia law. Any voter can request an absentee ballot and vote by absentee ballot. Um, there's some, been some discussion and testimony about this Cobb County pilot. Um, the board is likely aware that this pilot was ordered by like, Judge Totenberg in the Curley case last summer. That, that plan was to test out an emergency back stop in case the new Dominion equipment either didn't come in on time, wasn't available to be used, or hadn't been certified by that time. It was not presented as an alternate option for counties. And the judge in that case has certainly not ordered that this um, backstop plan be put into place. So to conclude, um, we believe the evidence establishes that the Athens Park County Board of Elections committed violations of the Georgia Election Code, um, specifically 21 to 300, which requires that all counties use the Dominion ballot marking devices and with optimal scanners. Um, we've also cited codes 212, 265, 266, and 267, which require boards to approve um, polling locations that can accommodate the equipment that's, that is required. Um, as far as options that are uh, available to the board, um, OCGA 212, 33.1 provides the particular remedies that are available, the board can order the Athens Clark County Board of Elections to cease and desist using Kmart paper ballots in a way that violates the election code. Um, a public reprimand is also a remedy that is available. The, the board can order that the county pay the Secretary of State's investigative costs, which I understand for this matter have become substantial because this has turned into a full-time endeavor for for many staff members of, of the office since the emergency hearing was announced. Um, the board may also impose a civil penalty of up to $5,000 per violation. The appropriate penalty is within the board's discretion. 
Um, it falls within your discretion to determine what's a violation. A violation could be each paper ballot that was cast um, improperly. Or it could be for each day the Board of Elections is not in compliance with the law. So it's up to you to determine both um, the amount per violation that should be imposed or and the number of violations. And let's see yeah, a change. In addition to the, the statutory provisions, uh, as the notice of hearing provides notice of, we believe that there's also been violations of um, the SED rule 183-1-12-0.01 and 
quota of privacy that was about secrecy. That is not our position. Uh, the position is what you heard here today, that, that you couldn't fit uh, enough machines, the required number of machines, in the space allowed in a way that would comply with the Secretary of State's guidelines that were specifically promulgated in order to guarantee in fact, uh, even though the Board of uh, Elections didn't have any sketches uh, at the time it made this decision, the ones we have seen look an awful lot more like uh, Mr. Harvey's examples of what not to do than what to do. And, and there's a real problem in Athens Park County, particularly with respect to uh, about six uh, polling places of whether you can fit the number of machines in, in the space in a manner that uh, is remotely consistent with, with what Mr. Harvey laid out. Um, and, and so the, this board being unable